Give me what to say Let me hear you Clearly define What I am to do Let every word Penetrate the heart Let what is said Leave them running to your arms Use me Lord Use me Lord I want to talk to you tonight about obedient training Obedient training How many, how many know that, it's a, that we have to be obedient in this way? We have to be obedient because it's, it's really, it's, it's, it's really it's proof of our faith, being obedient. Go with me to Psalms 86. And, no, go to, excuse me, go with me to Hebrews 5, 7 through 14. Hebrews 5, 7 through 14. And it says, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications, who to, with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared. We're talking about Jesus here. Though he was a son, he learned, somebody say learned. He learned obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became an author of eternal salvation unto all that obey him. Come on, somebody say, say I have to obey him. Call of God, the high priest, after the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing you are dull of hearing. For when, for when the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again which be the first principles of the oracles of God. And I become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. But everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong milk belongs to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. That word exercise means trained. Trained to discern both good and evil. Go with me to Psalms 86 and 11. Psalms 86 and 11. It says, Lord, teach me your ways, and I will obey your truths. Help me make worshiping your name the most important thing in my life. So we need the Lord to teach us. Teach us his ways. So that we may obey his truth. How many know the Lord has to teach us? Every day. We have to have an ear to hear every day. And walk in obedience every day to his word. Can somebody say amen? Amen. It says, help me make worshiping your name that the most important thing, that that's the most important thing in our life. Go with me to Hebrews 10 and 14. Hebrews 10 and 14. It said, by, by, offering, by offering he made perfect forever that they are sanctified. What does this mean? Being, we are being sanctified. Come and say, I'm saved, but I'm being sanctified. That's one thing about sanctification. There's no way we can walk in obedience without walking in, the, in, in sanctification. Because sanctification sets us apart, but makes obedience easy. Sanctification puts us in a, in a realm where we can, we can see better because it separates us from the things that are not like God. So then it gets to be, it gets to be easier to obey what God is trying to train us in. How many know we have to grow? It's all about growing. I just got done reading you about the, the babes. And it's sad to say, you know, there's, there's, there's people that have been, there people have been in church for 40 years and they're still babes. That's crazy, ain't it? The Bible says that we should have the weak among us always. 
But guess what? I ain't going to be one of them. <laughs> Come on, say, I'm not going to be one of them. You said they, 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 you said the week with you always, but I ain't going to be one of them. No, Lord, did. That's a choice. You know, that's a choice. You, if you, you've been hearing the word for 40-some years, coming to church for 40-some 40 40 years, and you're still a babe, you're still on milk, the basic teachings of new believers, then guess what? That's your fault. That's your fault. We have to, we have to, want, we have to have, want to have that desire. You know, a lot of times I ask God to, to put the desire in me because sometimes I don't feel like it. So I said, Lord, put the desire like a fire in me. The truth be told, sometimes you don't feel like reading the Bible. Sometimes you don't feel like praying. But I have to tell the Lord, I know, I, I know that's, 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 that's some, that's, that has to be the norm for the believer. We, that's something we must do. Whether you feel like it or not, it's not about feelings. And one thing we don't realize is, is we, the Bible says we walk by what? We walk by faith and not by sight. So a lot of times, we, you know, the, our feelings of the old man tries to get in our way to prevent us to, get, to eating that strong, getting that strong meat, that strong, that start, really the strong meat is somebody that's actually, uh, that's somebody that's spiritual. You know, he, he's designed, he, he, he's off the milk. And he's just, he's just desiring a stronger word, uh, a more closer walk with the Lord. And that's what, that's what all of us, all of us, should just, all of us should be desiring that. We should be desiring that, 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 that stronger meat, the, the closer walk with the Lord. So we can, just, he can, we can discern. He's, the Bible says that, that he's able to order our steps. How many of you know, I, I need my steps ordered. If, I, if I'm walking by faith and not by sight, I need my steps ordered because I don't try to order my own steps. That means I'm walking by sight. No, so yeah, it's it's a, it's a, it's 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 a it's a tough thing, you know. When you really think about it, Ephesians five and twenty six, Ephesians five and twenty six, it says that that he may sanctify and cleanse it. We talking about the church. He may sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of his word, washing of the water by the word. So we're cleansed. We're sanctified by the word. We're set apart by the word. The word, when we, when we, when we, when we allow the, when we read the word and allow the word to get in us, the word has a, a assignment. The Bible says that he's working the will and the do of his good pleasure in us. He's working. When it doesn't look like nothing's happening, guess what? Something's happening. <laughs> when, it looks like, when it looks like everything's going bad, but guess what? It's something going good. It might look bad, but it's, sometimes God has to take us down to, to bring us up. See, we don't like that. But he's working, he's working it out for, he's working out for our good. Sometimes we don't like hearing that, but that's, it is the truth. The hardest thing to do is to get your students to pass a test when they don't show up for class. It's not the teacher's fault or the textbook's fault. We have to show up to the word. We must show up to the word. Not just on Wednesday nights or Sunday mornings. This is, a, this is an everyday thing for us. This, matter of fact, this is who we are. This is how we are led. The Bible says, my word is spirit and it's life. He's ordering our steps, depending on how much you allow him to. Depend, really, depending on how much you're eating. You know, somebody told me the other day about, it's, it's, it's easy to be around the word, but the word has to be in us. It has to be active, alive in us. And we have to be sensitive enough to know when he's moving. Like we went on a fast a, a, a couple of weeks ago. And that's what the fast does. It makes you sensitive to the move of God. Even though it's a sacrifice of dying to, your, to the old man, it may, it's, it's worth it. Because it causes you to be sensitive. It, it causes you to, to not miss what God's been trying to show us all along. We miss some things. We, I know we, 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 hate, we hate to hear, a fa hear about a fast, but a fast is a good thing. It, 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 it tests us. See if we're going trust, to trust God to, to put, her, put us in a, and strengthen us in a, in, a, in, a, in a different place in him. 
Because when you fast and you come off, it might not be the first day, the second day. You know something didn't happen. Something going on. But God is move, God's moving in areas that, he, that he's been moving, but you didn't know it. That's what's crazy about it. He's, he's, he's been moving. He's been trying to tell you. But we, we can't hear. That's why we have to train our, our ears and we got to train our eyes. We got to be able to see what God is showing us. Sometimes I, I, I know, I, I ask the Lord, I said, sometimes when I'm stood up, I said, Lord, you know, I, I know, I just, something I'm missing. You know, it's something, it's something that I, I don't see. I need, I need you to reveal this to me because I know it's right in front of my face. Most time, what we're, what, we're, what we're seeking God for is right in front of our face. It's right in front of our face. All we have to do is, 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 is to start turning pages. Because God will give you a word. It might be just a word. And you just look up that word. And that word will lead to different scriptures. And then it brings deliverance to your situation. We got to know. But we, gotta know, we have to know that, that the answer for the believer is in the word. You know, we, we're, we're, quick, we, we're quick to run. You know, we, we're quick to run. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not down in doctors. I'm not down in hospitals. But we're quick to run to, to, the man, to, to man. And then, then, after, then, then we'll see God afterward. You know what I'm saying? Instead of seeking God first, then, then I'm not saying, and then go, you know, to the doctor if you want to. But seek God first. He might tell you something different. He might say, lay hands on yourself. You <laughs> say, oh, no, you, you, you're talking crazy. No, no, I'm not talking crazy. That's, that, that's, you know what that is? That's the mind of Christ. He might say, lay hands on yourself. I got you. It's a great possibility. But a lot of times a fear gets a hold of us, and the first thing we do, we go to the arm of the flesh, and we run to 911. And that's, you know, that's just, that's, just, that's just where we are. A lot of times that's just where we are. But I believe God wants us to, God, I, must, God, I think God wants us to, to step it up. Step it up. Trust me. I want you to trust me in areas. He says, I'm, ready to, I'm due to, to, ready to do exceedingly more than you can even think or ask. But you've got to ask. You're not asking. You're trusting in your, in, your, in, in your fear. You're trusting in your depression. But you're not trusting in me. I'm right here. That's why it's so important to have a prayer life. Because prayer, having, having a prayer life gives you an ear to hear. Ear to hear. Ear to trust God. In, in situations that, that are scary. That are scary. Even dogs have to be trained. Now, I'm not saying that we're dogs. I'm just saying dogs have to be trained. Because we, domestic, we domesticate dogs. What we do, we bring them in our house and we try to treat them like they're a part of the family, but they, they can't, you know, we have to train them to live like we want them to live in my crib. You can't be living in my crib just doing what you want to do. You know, you, you've got to, you know, you got to know when to go. you got to give me a signal, put your paw up, I got to go to the can. You got to let me know. You can't be just, they got to be trained because they don't know. It's just like us. The Bible says, that, the Bible says that, 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 that we've been born again. We were born from above. So we're, we're supposed to be walking in the kingdom of God, but we don't know how. We have to be trained. We have to be trained to walk in the, ki- in the kingdom of God. And that's what God is trying to do us. When he orders our steps, he's trying to train us. When we get in his word, he's trying to train us to walk in the kingdom. We're, we're, we're kingdom believers. We're in this world, but guess what? We're not of this world. And people should know that. I'm not talking about being weird. The Bible says that we're peculiar people. But you know, peculiar means to be purchased. <laughs> you, you've been bought. Why, the reason why we're peculiar is because we've been bought with a price. We've been purchased by the blood of Jesus. That's why we're different. People know that. People should know there's something, man, there's something different about that dude. There's something different about her. I, don't, I just can't put my finger on it. There's something different about her. And I tell people all the time, yeah, it's Jesus. I ain't got no problem with that. It is Jesus. That's, what, that's, a, that's why I, I, I'm that different person, because it's Jesus. Jesus lives in me. 
And every day I'm giving him more and more of my life. Every day I'm giving more and more of my life. And that's what we should be doing. Every day we wake up, we get a chance to wake up, get a chance to uh, uh, breathe, look around. We should be giving Jesus more and more of our life. We, matter of fact, we should just roll right out the bed, right on our knees, and say, yes, 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 every day. I want to have a closer walk with you every day. Oh, my God. The older you get, you realize, man, these days are precious. It's a miracle. Every day you wake up, <laughs> the older you get, every day you wake up, you say, oh, my God. He gave me another one. He didn't gave me another one. Oh, my God. It's a miracle. Man, I mean, every time I turn around, I know somebody, every time I turn around, folk, I, obituary, 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 obituary. And these folk, just as old as me, older than me, I know them. I'm like, oh, my God. God, Turner, you better work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Work it out. You can't work it out for me. I have to work it out unless I'm a babe. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Babes don't do that. Babe, we got to carry babes. But mature saints, they know how to work it out. They know how to work it out. I'm going to prove that to you in a minute. I'm going to work it out. So even dogs have to be trained. I got like five different instructions for dogs. And we're going to get off the dog thing. <laughs> One of the first things you teach a dog is to sit. Sitting is a posture of submission. Many of us can't be taught because we won't sit. We won't sit under nobody. We won't sit at the feet of wisdom. Those that stand before greatness are those that have sat at the feet of greatness. We must learn to sit. We must learn to sit. Stay is a, is a hard command. Stay. Because this command is given to someone who has the ability to leave. Staying can be hard when you have options. God told Israel to stay still and see the salvation of the Lord. And he says, stay until you get the next instruction. Oh, my God, stay still and see the salvation. And stay for the next. So, I mean, you got, see, you got to have an ear to ear to, to hear. So that means you, you, your ears have to be trained to hear the Lord, the voice of the Lord. So in the kingdom, we have to learn how to hear the voice of the Lord. It's his kingdom. It's not Trump's kingdom. It's his kingdom. We have to learn to hear what the Lord is saying to us. And that sounds crazy. When people say, I, I say this all the time. People say, well, you know, the Lord said. You know, sometimes saints get offended like, oh, okay. Oh, you one of those, right? No, that we all should be saying that. We should, matter of fact, we all should have a word. I mean, every day you should have a word. You should have a word. You, you should have a word. Preachers are the only ones that have a word. We all should have a word. You know why? Because we done been with Jesus. I done been with Jesus. Guess what? I got a word for you today. Be encouraged. The Lord is with you. He's got you. You want to pray? Let's pray. Be bold. But you wouldn't have been like that if you wouldn't have been on your knees or in your word. Because that's the Lord operating in you. He's operating in all of us. He wants, matter of fact, he wants to operate more in all of us. He's saying, give me, give me, I need, listen, I need more of your life. I only got like about 40%. Man, I need, I need, I need like another 20 I need more of your life so I can work the will and the do of my good pleasure in you. Because what you understand is that, 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 that the, 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 the word, your, 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 your sinful nature and, your, and the word are fighting for the same, same, same place, your soul. You know, some 60, some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. So that means 
So basically, when you get born again, there's 30% of the words in your soul. So that means 70% is flesh. <laughs> so you, you know what I'm saying? So it's easy, it's easy, it's easy to be, you know, the Bible said by, by you know, every, every wind and doctrine. You know, you're always just, anything just, just, just got your attention. But 60, that means 60% of the words in your soul, that's moon glory. 60% of the word is in your soul, so 40% is your flesh. So you got more control of your soul. Really, the moon is a, is a dead star. So that means you're dead to uh, uh, quite a bit of the things of the old man. The old man just keeps coming. But all of a sudden, the more you die, the more you have a deaf ear. I can't hear you, Doc. I can't hear nothing you're saying. Because I have more of the word in my soul than I have the, my, the, the, the flesh in my soul. That's taught that a long time ago. He taught that a long time ago. But that's the truth. You know, how much word, how much word are we uh, 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 putting in our, in our, in our soul? How much word are we allowing, allowing to uh, be a part of our souls? Some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. So we talked about stay, I mean sit. We talked about stay, and now we're going to talk about come. Then when God is calling you, come, that when God is calling you, no means, I mean, yeah, no, no more delays. No more delayed obedience. That when, when God is calling you, no more delayed obedience when he says come. When he says come, he's talking about right now. We, when we, we must learn the voice of God. We must learn to move at his voice before getting, out, before getting all the instructions. Oh, my God. He told Abraham to go to a land that he would show him. Man, we would go, we'd go nuts. Come on, pack your bags, Doc. You got to, and as you go, I will show. <laughs> That's how it works. I know, I'm, I'm talking about on a small level, that's how it works. When God tells us to do something, and he sees that we're starting to do it, then he shows us as we go. He shows us as we go. But you've got to go. He's not going to show it to you at once. He's going to show it to you as you go. As you go. The next one is heal. Heal means to walk beside the one who owns you. It's not, it's not about running in front. It's about operating in the timing of God, walking with him. We're learning to be obedient. You know, how many times have we ran out? God then told us, no, it's not like we can't hear it. Like, we, we can't, we don't know what God's saying. We didn't heard enough word. We know no word. We know when God says no or heal or come. And we done went out there and made some boo-boos. I'm talking about 30 years ago, and we're still paying for that junk. I'm serious. And it's not God's fault. It's not anybody's fault but ours. Because we wanted to do what we wanted to do. Been there and done that. And the last one is no. No. He done told us no a whole bunch of times. But we just decided to do it our own way and made shipwreck. No, we can't establish our faith system based on our feelings and our thoughts. That's where we get jacked up. On our feelings, we, walk, we don't walk by faith. We walk by feelings. We walk by these stupid thoughts that we don't cast down. That's, that's, that's crazy, but people, people do that. Matter of fact, I can say, I'm going to say we, we do that. You've got to be careful. It says, we can't establish our faith system based on our feelings or our thoughts. The thoughts are going to be backed up by the book. When we mature, we realize that obedience is, is the reward. <laughs> the Bible says, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. 
Delight really means obey. It says, the Bible says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. We must, we must, consume, we must consume ourselves with God's delight. Our desires will come, but we can't focus on our desire so much that we're not walking in obedience. Some of this stuff, man, you know, he, if God gave it to us, more likely we couldn't, he couldn't find us for a search warrant. Man, I ain't seen, I ain't seen so-and-so in three weeks. You know, I can't find her with a search warrant. Messed around and got, I ain't going to say hit the number, but she didn't mess around and got blessed. <laughs> messed around, got blessed. Can't find her with a search warrant. Yeah. Mature people have roots. You might wobble, but you ain't falling down. And God knows who to give. God knows who to bless people like that, because He knows that he, that he's that they're whoever that he or she is going to put them first, put him first. He could drop. He'll drop. He could drop ten million in your pocket. And guess what? You'd be the same, just like you ain't had nothing. Just like a Jew. Jew, you don't know nothing. Them folk got no money. They look the same everywhere they go. Same do, same car. No car, same, and to be and be loaded. Us, we got these big old chains breaking our neck. <laughs> Bentley, red bottoms. <laughs> Man, you about to get robbed, bro. You about to get robbed. <laughs> Praise God. Bible says, Bishop used to tell us all the time, he said, boy, if you don't laugh, you will bust wide open. Things be tore up on the floor, but you better, learn, you better learn how to laugh. You better laugh. <laughs> Tomorrow's another day. We got another day to fight. Go with me to uh, Hebrews 5, 8, 9. Hebrews 5, 8, and 9. Though he was a son, he learned, he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation to all that obey him. Come on, say, I have to obey, I have to obey him. See, he says, though he was a son, he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. See, you've you got to understand. You know, Jesus was, in the beginning, the father and the son, you know, uh, they were together. So they both were spirits. So now, he said, lo, I come as in a volume of a book. Prepare me a body. So he's going to come to earth in a body. He don't know nothing about being in no body. Bur born in a major in swaddling clothes, the savior of the universe, God himself. And do you think that he didn't suffer? What, is, what are all these feelings, all these temptations? He never sinned. He, never, he, he always obeyed his father. But now he has to walk as a man. And he's been in heaven all this time. Man, you're going to tell me that ain't a trip. That's a trip. That's a, I'm telling you, that's about, like us, we're walking around here full of flesh, full of sin, and all of a sudden, we get born again. And now, we, now, the word is telling us that we have the ability to walk in the steps of Jesus. Oh, my God. That's like, what? The same thing with him. He, 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 he was suffering. You know, he was being tempted and all kind of, uh, 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 all these feelings and stuff that he never had before. But the Bible said he never, he, he, he never sinned. But he had to deal. He was like, dude, I, obedience for man has got to be, I get it, I get it, I get it. Obedience for man is a mug. So now I got to, you know, that's why they sent me, they sent me to fix it. They sent me to fix it. 
since I know what they're going through and how they feel, I understand what my death is all about now. Now I can be an example to humanity because I understand what they're going through. Jesus died. He died. He died. <laughs> yes, he did. He died like a dog. Go to Philippians 2, 6, 7, and 8. Philippians 2. He, he realized how, how difficult obedience was to, a man, to man when he came into this earthly realm. You know, he, he realized what we were going through. Ephesians, I mean not Ephesians, but Philippians 2 and 6. Who being in the form of man, thought it was not robbery to be equal with God. But he made himself no reputation. He took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of of man. Now, when I was really thinking about that, I was like, oh my God. You know, him and God sitting there together, man, talking about how they're going to create the universe. And now God's got a plan. I got to send a man. He said, Lo, I come in a volume of a book. He said, Prepare me a body. And when he got down here, he was like, O M. G. O M G. You know, when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, you know, um, he, he wanted he didn't he wanted to pass the cup up. He says, "Man, he says if I can, is, is any way I can get out of this." He says, "You know, I need to, I need, you know that." And, and basically, that was that was his flesh because he had the same flesh we did. He said, that, "If any way I can get out of this." But the thing about when I studied that, it wasn't about going to the cross. It was, about, it was about being separated from the Father. See, sin separates. He took, he took the sin of the world. He took the sin of the world on him. Sin separates. When we miss the mark and don't repent, guess who does? It separates. Our closest, gets, our closest uh, uh, to God gets, if you don't watch it, it'll be a, it'll be a canal. You, you know, it'll be a lake. You don't watch it, man. We used to always say a backside is going without knowing. That's the devil's slick. You still come to church. But you know deep down you're so far away from God, it's not even funny. Sin separates. Sin separates. And being found in the fashion of man, he humbled himself. Verse 8. And became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And the thing about it, we got our own cross. <laughs> we got our own cross. Amen. The sinful nature. That we have to die. The Bible says die daily. Every day. Die to the old man because he, he wants to get a better grip on your life. He ain't stopping. He ain't sleeping. He's just waiting for you to make a hiccup. And he's going to be right back. He's going to get a better grip. You, you was at 60. Now you're down to 50. 30, 60, now you're down to 50. Because he's trying to get a better grip on your soul, your, 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 your emotions, your mind, your will. That's what he wants. I want it back. I want it all back. I'm going to hell, and I want you to be there with me. That's what it is when you think about it. So we don't, we, a lot of times, I don't, I don't think we don't, no, we have something, we have something to fight for. We have Something to, I don't care how bad it gets. Now, we all got our own stories. We all have our own story. But I'm telling you right now, we all have Jesus. That means we have eternal life. That means we have the promises of God. All we have to do is touch the hem of his garment. We have to get, I'm not saying we're not serious. I'm just saying we got to get more serious. <laughs> I know we're serious because we're here on Wednesday night and ain't nobody in here and it's freezing outside. It's getting cold. So I know you're serious, but we got to get more serious. My days to sing this song, just a closer walk with thee. Let it be 
Dear Jesus, let it be. It says, when I'm weak, thou art strong. And that's my, that's, that's my prayer every day. Lord, let me have a closer walk with that. Because I know there is. <laughs> I know there is. And all of us, we should know that there is. The Holy Ghost should be telling you, listen, bro, I need you to get closer to me. Stop playing with this. I know you hear me. Turn the TV off. Get off your, get off your, off your phone, flipping, flipping Facebook, Instagram, whatever kind of gram, other kind of gram, whatever. Slow your roll. I'm not saying stop. I'm just saying slow you. If you can, if you can't, stop. Slow your roll and let's have a talk. Truth be told, I, I know I'm on the phone too much. Especially when it, when it pops up, oh, you've been on the phone how long, how many hours this week? I'm just, this week, I'm like, dang. <laughs> like, dang. I have been on the phone way too much. Oh, my God. Go to John 15 and 10. We have to learn obedience. Learn obedience. Man, obedience is precious. It says, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my commandments, and abide in his love. So it's saying keep, keep commandments. That means obey. O obey my word. I need you to obey my word. Because if you obey my word, that means you abide in, in my love. But it's really the same thing as because God is love. So he means abide in me. You will abide in me. If you keep my commandments. So if we, if we keep his commandments, it says you will bear fruit. That means you will bear more of him. You'll, be, 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 you'll, you'll bear more of his life. And you'll know it too. <laughs> you know why? I'm going to tell you why. Because the process of sanctification, you start dropping stuff off. All of a sudden, your appetite starts changing. All of a sudden, you, I, don't even feel like getting, I don't even feel like watching no TV. I don't feel like watching nothing. Just keep it off. I don't, I don't want to watch nothing. Something's happening on inside. I'm not talking about just food. I'm talking about things that distract us from, from, from following Jesus more. Now, we're following Jesus, but I'm saying following Jesus more. He says that you will bear fruit. He <laughs> says if you abide in me and I abide in you, then you can ask me. What you want? Oh, my God. You can ask me what you want. Man. And that's only if we walk in obedience. Matter of fact, it says in John, John, 1 John, somebody says, if they that abide in me sin not. Oh, my God. They that abide in me sin not. Hello, hello. We could almost kind of break that down and say practice. We don't practice sin. Saints don't practice sin. We miss the mark every now and then, but guess what? We do not practice sin. We do not practice sin. Go back to me, Hebrews 5, 12 through 14. Hebrews 5, 12 through 14. It says, but for when the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again. Be the first principles of oracles of God and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, in the, in the word of righteousness. For he is a babe, but strong meat belongs to them that are full of age. Even those by reason of use have their senses exercised. That word I told you was trained to discern both good and evil. Go to 1 Corinthians 3, 1 through 3. 1 Corinthians 3, 1 through 3. It says, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you, unto you spiritual. But as unto as carnal, even though even to un, 
even as unto babes in Christ. Man, let me say that again. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual. Now he's talking to believers, man. But as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. And he's talking about folks supposed to be, supposed to be you know, have some, have some death in the way. I have fed you, I fed you with milk, not with meat. For hitherto you were not able to bear it. Neither yet now are you able. For you are yet carnal. Oh my God. For which as, for whereas there is among you envy. How I know you, how I know you're carnal? Because you're, among you are e envy, strife, divisions. Are you not carnal and walk as men? So that's telling us that, you know, we can be so carnal that we're just like somebody in the street that ain't, ain't never heard nothing about Jesus, period. That's scary. And I know, I know, I, and I know we're all carnal to some degree because if, if we weren't, he wouldn't say die daily. <laughs> you, you, if you're dying daily, you've got to be dying to something, from something. So we, I know that we're all carnal to some degree, but, you know, he says die. You got, you got, to, keep, you got to keep ahead of this thing. You've got to die daily. You got to pray daily. You got to get in your word daily. You got to be obedient daily. Every day. We got to be in the book. And you got to be no preacher either. You got to be a believer. Well, a lot of times people people just, well, you know, you know, the, 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 you know. No, listen, man, you all of us, you're, I'm listening, you're responsible for your own salvation. You know, you, the Bible says it tells you to work it out. A lot of times we just flat out lazy. People don't like to hear that word, but it's still the truth anyhow. We just flat out lazy. Hebrews 15 and four, 5 and 14, it, it says, be strong. Be, be strong. But strong meat belongs to them that are full of age, even those by, by reason of use have their own senses trained, exercised, practiced to discern both good and evil. Good and evil. <laughs> when I read that, I realized that um, babes, like I said a few, a few minutes ago, babes, you got it, man, you... You gotta almost do everything for them. You know, you got you got babes. You got to clean them, clean them up, change their diaper. You got to carry them. You got to do everything. But a mature saint, he knows. A mature saint knows how to how to practice practice uh, 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 the things that he needs to keep him strong. And he knows when he knows when he's when he's when he's slacking up because you can tell you're getting carnal. You're getting too worldly. Get too happy about temporal things. Get too happy about too temporal things. Matter of fact, you're thinking too much about temporal things. That's when you know you, brother, you, you know, you better slow your roll. Matter of fact, you, we, we need to repent. Because we know better. God is just waiting on the seats, waiting on the sidelines. Like, dude, I've been trying to hook you up. But you're too busy trying to trying to trying to, to fatten your wallet. been there, done that, man. I've been there, done that. The Bible says that in Daniel eleven thirty two 32, it says, they that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Really, really when he says exploits, that they, they're fighters. When I say strong, I'm talking about strong in the, in the word, not that strong in, not strong in the book, strong in Christ. And you know how to fight the good fight of faith. That know, I'm talking, it says that, that, that know their God. Romans 12 and 1. Romans 12 and 1. It says, I beseech you therefore, brother. I see, this is where we're going. This is where we're going. It says, I beseech you therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Holy acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And that word reasonable is spiritual. That's where we're going as believers. 
we realize that this, this body has to, to it, spiritually speaking, it has to die. The old man, the, the body of the sinful nature has to die. It has to be sacrificed every day. In order to walk into obedience, it has to be. Uh, people don't, I'm telling you, people, people don't, they, they don't, they don't want to be trained anymore. They don't want to be trained. Just like, you remember that movie called Karate Kid back in 1984? I know, I know y'all, some of these folks, I know y'all older than me. <laughs> back in 1984, you know, Karate Kid, and he had this, he had this instructor called uh, Mr. Mizaki, Ms. Mizaki, I can't pronounce his name, Mizaki, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, you know, he wanted to be like him. You want to be like him? He says, oh, okay, you want to be like me? Go wash that car. Lights on, lights off. And he got mad. See, people, man, people want to start, they, they, people want to start at the top. You know, you, you can't, you ha we have to be trained. We don't know nothing about walking in the kingdom of God. We have to humble ourselves. Walk in obedience. And the Bible said, God will exhort you in due time, in due time, if you humble yourself, I will exalt you in due time. And whatever due time is, it's, that's when I tell you. I was a, I was a, uh, I was a journeyman, uh, electrical journeyman, a pipe fitter journeyman at, at, at GM in Carson for 47 years. I used to have apprentices. You know, them guys would come up to me and they'd give me a apprentice for like six months. And these dudes, you know, they wanted, they wanted. Dude, you don't know what I know. It took me, it took me forever to learn this. So, so I said, you know, all you can do is shadow me, you know, and, and, and uh, you ask me questions. I said, but the best thing you can do right now is just do what I tell you to do. Carry my tools, you know, and they, they get mad. They didn't want to carry your tools. Dude, you don't know nothing. That's why you're with me. You don't know nothing. That's the that's a truth. It's the last scripture, 2 Corinthians 7 and 1. That's the truth, man. People want, people want to go from A to Z. Dude, what about all this other stuff in the middle, man? There's so much we don't know. You know, I mean, walking, following Jesus is a lot we don't know. That's why we have to listen, man. We got to pay attention. I mean, Bishop Bogey said all the time, man. He says, listen. He said, when you come in here, I don't care what you did out there. When you come in here, you don't know nothing. You don't know, he said, you ain't nothing. That's what he said. I don't care what you did out there. When you come in here, you ain't nothing. You don't know, you don't, you don't know the ways. You don't know the ways of the Lord, man. You don't know nothing. And so we have to humble ourselves. Humble ourselves. Humble ourself. And that becomes the norm of a believer. I don't, care how, I don't care how much he anoints you. I don't care how much he blesses you. I don't care where you live at. I don't care what kind of car you drive. We got we to be there. We, gotta, we, gotta, we have to stay humble. Because God's fitting to tell you. He's fitting to tell you. You know, he, 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 like most, one thing I know about God, when he blesses you like that, he's, he's blessing you to give it, to give. <laughs> People like hearing that. We're going to hoard up, you know, barn building food. Then this day, your life was, 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 was you were taken out of here. People don't realize, man. When, when God gives us stuff like that, I'm talking about extra uh, abundance. Uh, it's, it's really to, to help, but you've got to be, you got to discern it. To give, to help people. 2 Corinthians 7 and 1, it says, Having therefore these promises, I'm telling you, this, this is our responsibility. Beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all defilement of flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Saints, we have work to do. Give me what to say. Let me hear you. Thank you for listening. If this teaching has been a blessing to you and you'd like to partner with our ministry to share the message of Jesus Christ, please visit our website at www.hmclive.org and click the donate button. If you're in our area, we invite you to join us at 4317 Lippincott Boulevard, Burton, Michigan, 48519. Harris Memorial, Church of God in Christ, teaching the truth and showing the love.